Thank you very much, Chairman. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers of this conference for giving a prominent place to representatives from NGOs in this presentation and uh, in the panel that follows. Uh, many of you who uh, watch uh, the goings-on in Brussels will probably know the role that uh, my organization, WWF, and our companion organization, the European Environmental Bureau, have been playing in the passage of the Water Framework Directive but also in the common implementation strategy, its associated working groups, and more recently in monitoring the transposition and implementation arrangements of the Water Framework Directive. I would say, uh, after my experience of being in Brussels for many years, this is probably an unprecedented example of NGOs entering into the implementation processes of EU legislation and participating, I have to say, as full members. It is possibly not always understood just how far NGOs like ours, like WWF, EEB, are committed to staying in for the long haul of the policy and legal implementation processes and not just the actual uh, moments when the legislation is being passed uh, through the Parliament and the Council. But I also, as an NGO representative, have to say that this official participation uh, doesn't blunt our performance in also performing a traditional NGO watchdog function. WWF and the European Environmental Bureau have alerted the Commission on three occasions in 2003 and 2004 with our so-called snapshot reports on, on problems with the Water Framework Directive. These, these three reports have uh, concentrated on the transposition problems, the designation of river basin authorities, our concerns about public participation arrangements, and the status of environmental and economic reports. And then just last year, in 2006, uh, WWF and EEB, on behalf of 17 environmental organizations in Europe, submitted an official complaint to the European Commission on the improper implementation of the Water Framework Directive by 11 member states. And as far as we know, this is being followed up actively at the moment by the Commission. So therefore, we welcome the publication today by the European Commission of the results of its own assessment report on the Water Framework Directive, the one that's just been handed out at lunch last time. And not surprisingly, it comes to many of the same conclusions uh, that we ourselves have come to. There, there is a problem, there is an implementation problem on the Water Framework Directive, and uh, it gives cause for concern in a number of areas. Lack of proper transposition, lack of proper implementation, undermines the credibility and effectiveness of European policy making. Uh, I, I believe it also plays into the hands of some Euro doubters about the European approach to rulemaking. Inadequate, improper implementation runs counter to the very objectives of the single market. It doesn't create the level playing field that industry wants and where the water industry is a huge uh, uh, sector in our economies and a major employer. I believe the non uh, or the uh, inadequate implementation of the Water Framework Directive also fundamentally misreads the concerns of the public on the issue of water, where, for example, a recent Eurobarometer study has shown that 47% of European citizens list water pollution as among the main five main environmental issues that they are worried about. 
inadequate uh, implementation of the Water Framework Directive fails to take account of new policy challenges like those that will be associated with climate change and uh, the adaptation to the phenomena that we are now going to become, have to become more used to, uh, the droughts and the floods uh, that are already affecting uh, large parts of Europe. Inadequate transposition, inadequate uh, implementation leads to the worsening of the already stressed state of EU waters and the loss of the functions that effectively functioning water systems provide, flood retention, drinking water, food provision, food provision fisheries, tourism. And uh, last but not least, from an organization like mine, WWF, you would expect me to say that inadequate implementation also threatens the loss of nature and biodiversity, which have a right to exist in their own right. So regrettably, the analysis of the quality of the uh, Water Framework Directive implementation shows a wide diversity and difference among member states. The report that issued by the Commission today highlights just how serious the situation with our waters is and the scale of the challenges we are now facing. On average, more than 50%, one half, of Europe's surface waters and groundwaters are at risk of not meeting good water status, the good water status objective of the Water Framework Directive by 2015. In some countries, it's much higher. Uh, I believe in the Netherlands, it's been estimated that uh, perhaps more than 90% of the water will fail to meet that status. In a recent uh, report by the International Commission for the Protection of the Danube River, it estimated uh, under the, the Danube Roof Project that 86% of large parts of the Danube are at risk or possibly at risk to fail the objectives of the EU Water Framework Directive. And here on the Danube, the main concern being alterations to channels from engineering, dredging, dams, and other engineering works. Now, this sounds gloomy, it is gloomy, uh, but it would be wrong to suggest that in the last seven years, we have not seen some steps forward. We do now have a vast body of information on Europe's river, river basins, and the WISE project that we've just listened to is going to complement that and add to that uh, even more. We are setting new policy parameters for member states, which for the first time have committed to integrate water protection into wider industrial planning. There are a number of positive examples of water framework directive implementation which prove that it is possible to implement the directive properly and on time.